What are you guys up to? Huh? Oh, look. It's her. She's the one down here. Eh, not here. <laughs> Don't kick stuff. There you go. All right. Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm Lynx, and today we're gonna do a Holy Relic tier list. Uh, well, not quite. Um, I got this uh, question asked if I had done a Holy Relic tier list on my first stream. Uh, for those of you who caught it, thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I got a question if I had made one uh, or if I'm planning on making one. I thought, you know what, I might as well make one. Uh, whatever you guys tell me to do, I'll do. If you tell me to jump off a bridge, I'll do it. A video game bridge. A video game bridge. I'm not going to do it for real. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a tier list, kind of. Um, what I had planned here was, I'll go over and mention what sort of holy relics are worth getting. Uh, so sort of only the best ones, and then the rest, like, once you've gotten those uh, very best ones, then you can sort of focus on the other ones. I'm not gonna go over exactly which one is the best, like, it, it totally depends on, like, what you're running, what teams you are, uh, like, focusing on, and... Um, if you're focusing on, say, PvP versus PvE content and all of those good stuff. Um, as you know, there are three Demonic Beast battles. And each Demonic Beast battle gives relics for two different races. So I thought I would go over them in reverse order. So we will start with the Wolf Boss. And the Wolf Boss gives us um, holy relics for demon characters and also for giant characters. Now this is the latest ones. And these are, these are the ones that we have access to right now. So if you're watching this video in the future, uh, this list could have been updated, you know, of the characters we can use. Um, but which one do I think is the most worth it? Well, there are two that stand out. Uh, one is for this Zeldris. This is the one I actually made from uh, as my very, very first one. And only because Zeldris, uh, this festival Zeldris actually works in so many teams, not just the demon team as a backline unit uh, where you're running um, the OG Hendrickson, I guess, uh, with the new Festival Estrosa. Um, because this Holy Relic is really good, it decreases the enemy's um, attack-related stats by 10%, and you know how good like attack-related stat buffs are, so having attack-related stats actually be decreased is super, super good and useful and helpful. And, you know, as you know, Zeldris works in as a backline unit in so many different teams. He works with... Um, uh, any, any sort of debuff team, such as the Wedding Bronhill team. Uh, he also works with uh, the Blue Christmas Lilia, or the Blue Awakened Lilia, if you want to call her that. And sort of any team. Uh, it's mostly for PvP purposes though. Like, he isn't really a PvE unit, since most PvE content, most bosses, uh, are immune to debuff. So, this Zeldris sort of falls off there. Um, the Chandler though also does have a really really good holy relic. So if you have built up your Chandler and you wanna make his relic over Zeldris, then I mean be my guest, he has a really really good relic. Um, so what it does is it removes debuffs from his himself when using a stand skill. So pretty much just what the uh, Esther Rosa, the OG green Esther Rosa does. Uh, if you have him on your team and you stands up, it sort of removes buffs. But this is only for himself though. And then he also decreases damage taken by 30% for two turns and increases HP related stats by 20%. Now the HP related stats are really nice. I don't particularly like the damage decrease, um, but as we're seeing with new units coming out, and uh, they're hitting so hard. So I mean, the damage decrease is good. And why don't I really like it? Well, it's because of Chander's kit. Um, so the more damage he takes with his taunt here, the more damage he... Uh, deals back to the enemy. So here it increases like if he takes a hundred thousand damage He's gonna hit back with another 50,000 damage to the enemy 70,000 and a hundred thousand so having this you know, that's in addition to like the 450 percent 300 percent and 200 percent of his attack. So I mean he's really good if you want to get his holy relic go for it but sort of the, one of the very best teams is the uh, full power Ragnarok team. We're gonna use this. Oh my god come on we're gonna use this um, Ragnarok Diane and her Holy Relic, of course. Um, which, uh, if we look here, in PvP, so it only works in PvP, for every Ragnarok unit, or, and also herself, uh, cannot take more damage than 50% of their max health in one attack. Um, 
and she also increased attack related stats by 1% for every 6% of the remaining HP when using skills. So turn 1, if you get to go first, that's almost 17% additional attack related stats, 16.6667, whatever, that's, we'll just call it 17%, and that's so good. And if you combine it with like this Wedding Bronhild, um, and also the Sigurd, and also then a backline sort of Ragnarok Ban, or I think Zeldris also works, because you're gonna debuff the enemies. That's a really, really good combo team, and you can pretty much kill any unit turn one with it. And then also survive really well if you don't get to go first. So, really, really strong Holy Relic, and I think it's, she's actually better than the Zeldris. I didn't have her built up, though, so... I mean, I should probably build her up, and I think this is the next Holy Relic that I'm gonna get for the uh, Demons and Giants, but yeah, those are the only ones I would recommend. Like, all others are sort of mid. Uh, the Droll one, Droll doesn't really matter. Like, it's a PvP Holy Relic. Uh, he's not really gonna buff himself in PvE anyway, so his Holy Relic is totally worthless there. I'm not sure if Skadi's Holy Relic uh, sort of gives herself a permanent buff or not. If it's a permanent buff, that's quite nice, but it's a, sort of a selfish holy relic. It doesn't really help your overall team, it's just a little bit of extra damage for her. And I mean, she doesn't do the most damage. She's not the damaging type, she's mainly used as a buffer because of her because of her passive here. Matrona's holy relic increases like basic stats of giants. I mean, cool, I guess, but who are you gonna run her with? Like, you, you can only run her with Skadi, because she's a tank unit. I guess if you're running the blue Matrona, do you even have her? Yeah, I do. I guess blue Matrona in combination. So you have her Holy Relic in combination with her passive here, which increases the basic stats by 25%. That could be really cool, because it excludes PvP. And you can have her in the back, and then you can have this Diana in the front. I guess that's good, but I mean, priority-wise, don't go for it. <laughs> Alright, so next up we have the Deer Holy Relics, and... For this one, there are some really, really good ones here, and the Dear Holy Relics are for the Goddesses and also the Fairies. Now, Fairies have very, very mid Holy Relics, and uh, because of the units aren't really that great, and they've sort of fallen off. This Winged Elaine, I guess in combination with this King, um, their, their Holy Relics work really well in tandem, so I guess if you have some spare, go for that, but I would focus on the Goddesses first. Um, I'm not gonna go over what her Holy Relic does or anything. Uh, another good one could be Helbrum. He could be used as a backline unit. And like this Winged Elaine, this Helbrum along with this King can work really well for the guild bosses. So maybe you can focus on that if you wanna really focus on that. So then you can go for these. Uh, otherwise I would suggest going for the Goddesses. Even if you don't really have a Goddess team built up. But if you do, uh, there are some Holy Relics that are better than others. So the best one, if you're going for PvP, uh, for the goddesses is to get the green Zeldris holy relic and also the blue Tarmil holy relic because those two work in combination with each other. If you didn't know, green Zeldris' holy relic uh, increases his attack by 20% whenever he's attacked. This applies before he's attacked and so that means that his counter will do more damage if you have his counter stance up. Uh, when, inflicted damage, uh, when inflicting damage to an enemy using skills or counters recovers 15% of the damage dealt. That's really good. Now why is he good with the blue Tarmil Holy Relic? Well, because blue Tarmil decreases ally's damage taken by 20% when in a stance. And this is when the ally is in a stance. Not Tarmil doesn't need to be in a stance because he does have a stance card, but he doesn't need to be in a stance. And, and increases damage dealt by counters by 30%. So you're not only gonna get 20% more attack with Zeldris here, So you're not only gonna get 20% more attack with Sariel here, but the Tarmil is gonna boost your damage a further 30%, which is really, really good. That's a really great combo. Now in the Goddess team, what you also have, because you're gonna have this Tarmil in the back, and what you also have is this Light Liz and also this Margaret in the front. Now Margaret's Holy Relic is terrible for this team uh, because it increases her damage dealt by 5% and damage taken by 5% for each Archangel on the field that's an ally, so it's not enemy archangels, only allies. And with this goddess team that we currently have, you will only ever have two goddesses or two archangels in the front. Which one is Green Sariel and the other one is Margaret herself. So you'll only be able to do 10% more damage and also take 10% less damage. That's super terrible. 
just make this if you're really really going for the goddess teams and then also because you know it's gonna increase your cc so you could go first with the team um otherwise i wouldn't recommend it what i would recommend instead uh, is to go for this red zeldris he's great for pvp like don't get me wrong it's good for pvp but he really really shines in pve and with this because he increases his basic stat by up to 40 percent on its own if you combine it with like other basic stat increases such as Megelda or Jormungand for the demonic beast battles if you're using him uh, for those he's gonna have basically like 50,000 attack <laughs> and he's just gonna completely crush everything so his holy relic is really good he it activates whenever he crits and he does have two crit cards and one of them is this sever card here and the other one is the sever ultimate so he has a really really another really good one that makes other units really pop off is the blue ludosiel's holy relic and it's basically just a stat stick for him but with his if you have his equipment maxed out if you have his cosmetics maxed out you could get something like and you can't see it now because my camera is in the way but if i do hold on, if i do this you can 67,560 cc that's quite nice it out cc's pretty much anyone who doesn't run you know HP defense with uh, attack, HP, and defense substats. And those, there's only a couple of units who actually out CC him, such as the one Escanor, and pretty much only new units. But other than that, like he's super, super good. All other units are sort of mid, except for maybe this Liz. Uh, if you're really focusing on the wolf boss, uh, the best team actually uses her. So this holy relic does help out. Like it increases HP related stats by 15%. That's like all right sure uh, but it actually does help like when you're healing with her it's gonna heal a little bit more uh, you're gonna life steal a little bit more and it's i mean it's useful if you're gonna run her on the wolf boss if you don't really have like the wolf boss units yet then maybe don't focus on that although she could be a really good replacement for megelda for the bird boss uh, i do have a video of that up on my channel so try to find it <laughs> <laughs> I don't have too many videos, it shouldn't be too hard to find. But anyway, next up we're up for the bird boss and holy relics and these are for the unknowns and also for the humans. Now these are the ones we have most holy relics for. Uh, for the unknowns I can only really see two units that are really really good for the holy relics and for now we're gonna ignore the, the collab units. Now the two units and the one you should focus on first, before any humans, before any unknown other unknown units you should focus on Megelda's holy relic because she's pretty broken with it i'm not gonna lie if you have traitor meliodas and you get Megelda's holy relic i mean the bird boss you can farm it infinitely super easy super quick it's such a good holy relic now why is it so good though well in the demonic beast battle against the bird boss for her passive every time she heals someone to full or anytime someone heals to full and this could be from other units as well or their own lifesteal or something that unit will get a buff. Now this is really good for Meliodas because he does have an Amplify card that hits super super hard. But I mean, having that alone isn't enough, you know? What this one does is not only anytime you heal someone to max, but anytime you use her recovery card. She will not only remove one buff, but also apply one of those buffs. And they do not stack separately. They stack together because it's the same buff and it stacks five times. But this means that you can pretty much always have like three, four, five buffs up. And it's going to make the bird boss so much easier. So the very, very first bird boss relic you should get, if you do have Megelda, is Megelda's holy relic. Now the second one for at least the unknowns, if you're going for unknown teams, is this gopher one. It's good for like any PvE content you want to throw him on because he increases your attack related stats by 25% for two turns anytime he gets his ultimate. This is really good for, well, at least the initial sort of wolf boss teams. Um, but it's also super, super broken for PvP. And if you can get his ult off and then just hit with some any cards really with any like unit you throw me in with this team it doesn't have to be an unknown team it can be sort of the goddess liz team or i mean the light liz team and that could work really well so go for here super broken holy relic really really good you should totally get it all the other ones like you couldn't wait for with them and they're not gonna be super broken like if you're going for a ultrash team having just a little bit more damage uh, Oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> That's the Merlin. 
If you're going with an Ultras team, uh, you can get a little bit more damage with your unknown races. So if say you have 6-6 six, six Rimuru and you put him in the Ultras team, yeah, his ult is going to kill everything, you know. And it's going to do a little bit more damage, 35% increase more damage, so... Like this Merlin also has a good Holy Relic, I guess, and uh, it increases, it's a selfish Holy Relic, it increases her damage or attack by 20% when attacking debuffed enemies. Not the greatest, like who runs Merlin nowadays anyway. This Gopher, while Gopher used to be really good, and this red one has come back into the meta, it's not, he, he has a trash Holy Relic, like you should focus, totally focus on other units first, uh, but we'll move on to the humans now. And as for humans, uh, it depends on what sort of teams you want to run. If your number one priority is the Bond team, and with the new Reinhard Van Astria that's coming out with the ReZero collab, the Bond team is really viable. So, like, you should totally then focus on Bond's Holy Relic. It's great whenever a unit dies, he gains more HP. And as you know, he, just like Reinhard, is based on HP. His detonate, he's, he, like, he does damage based on his max HP. He increases his own max HP. Like, he is totally an HP unit. The Arthur one is also uh, really, really good for that team. He pretty much, if he survives with 20% or less health, he pretty much full heals. Super good. And of course, Twee God's Holy Relic. Uh, if they kill Arthur, Twee God will come down and he will take the pressure off of uh, both Ban and then also Reinhardt. Or if you're running Terry, then he will also take the pressure off Terry. Now, what other humans can you put Holy Relics on? Well, this Brunhild, of course. Like, Brunhild is great for PvE and PvP content. Like, this one is great for PvE. PvE content, this one's great for PvP, and they share the same Holy Relic, which increases their attack by 20% if they have a debuff on them, and they can only have one debuff. And this is re also really good, because if you get encroached by the new Festival Esterosa, and then they apply another debuff to you or something, then that will replace the encroachment, which is pretty broken. <laughs> another great Holy Relic to consider is the one for Sigurd. And now it is a selfish holy relic, but it's gonna make it so that Sigurd is actually a menace when it comes to actually dealing damage. Without it, he, he doesn't really deal that much damage and he's only there for his passive, for so, sort of like the Ragnarok team. But if you have his holy relic, he's actually gonna be able to pop off uh, with his own Amplify card here. So that's a good relic to consider. Now if you have your Christmas Lilia built up and you're running a Lilia team, which I mean she has fallen off a bit, then you can get her holy relic. It's good for her, it increases the basic stat by 10% for every debuff effect on the enemy that she attacks. Usually, if you run her team turn 1, you can have 3 or 4 debuffs on the enemies. So that's another 30 to 40% basic stat increase before she attacks with her, you know, flood card. Uh, so that's a really good holy relic you can consider. Now, if you're focusing on some PvE content where you want to actually farm PvE, uh, getting Shin's Holy Relic could be really good because it increases his damage dealt by 50% when attacking debuffed enemies and of course if you run a team that instantly applies a debuff to an enemy then that's really great. Like you can use it to auto farm gold dungeon whenever it's uh, you know uh, half stamina weekend um, and you can throw him together with this Arthur and then also Fairy King. Now this Arthur also has a good Holy Relic which applies a debuff to enemies so Shin will always deal more damage if you're running that combo. Like there are of course other combos you can run with sort of this red Brunhild if, if she uses her AoE, uh, which is a bit finicky on, uh, especially when auto running. And then for the rest of the Holy Relics, I don't really know. Uh, the, I don't really play with the Catastrophe units, I don't really have their Holy Relics. All others are sort of mid, not really worth getting, at least not above the other ones that I've mentioned. Now we do have one final category of Holy Relics, and that is Holy Relics for collab characters. Now, as you know, with every new collab rerun, uh, we have gotten some new Holy Relics, and with this one, we are going to get the Holy Relic for Ram, uh, Ram, Emilia, Beatrice, and as well as the two new units, Echidna and Reinhard. That means we are gonna get six Holy Relics. Now, if you don't wanna craft a Holy Relic for either of these, uh, you can use the materials to craft any of the other holy relics that you've missed out on. And for me, I've actually missed out on one of the holy relics, which is this one. It doesn't have the best holy relic though. It's not the worst, but it, like the, the unit isn't the greatest. Say you've missed out on sort of the Terry holy relic for whatever reason. <laughs> then yeah, you can craft Terry's holy relic. He should be so much better. Kyo's holy relic is also super amazing. Uh, Rimuru's holy relic, super super good. Milim is a great PvE unit, Benimaru and the Shuna, I think those two are below all the other four that I mentioned. The rest are sort of trash, I mean craft them if you want to, but I mean they're sort of the same level of trash as most of these Holy Relics. 
I guess like she will only get like a stat stick with her holy relic. Uh, like a stat stick would have actually been better. Her holy relic is sort of like a buff to her damage. <laughs> she's a backline unit. She's not gonna do deal damage, and when she does come down. It's not like she's done dealing a lot of damage. Emilia sort of got shafted on her Holy Relic, but it's not as bad as like people make it out to be. Um, because she still has a great ultimate, and if you do the math, like her Holy Relic is basically she does 100% extra damage to an enemy uh, that is frozen from her freeze. If you freeze someone and then use her ult at 1-6, and you have one extra card, at 1-6 that would actually deal more damage to that one single unit than a 6-6 six six with one card would do. So, yeah, secret technique ultimate, super great. Uh, it's basically, it basically doubles the damage you do. And you don't need too many alt levels with her for the Holy Relic to actually be really good. But, uh, you know, we are gonna get their Holy Relics. So it could still be worth crafting, but if you don't really want to play with Emilia and you don't want to get her Holy Relic for whatever reason, you want to get someone else's, then you can. Like, that's totally an option. Unfortunately, we are only gonna get six, so I'm never really gonna get this Holy Relic unless they give me... So because the event that they put it on and I didn't have enough leveling up materials and so I couldn't get like the final piece because you needed to have like all units max level and stuff like that to actually sort of beat the arcade event or whatever that's why I don't have it but it's fine I don't play with this unit she's level 60 it doesn't matter to me but yeah that's it for the video I went on a super super long rambly rant uh, 27 minutes recorded I'm gonna cut it down to something a lot more manageable for you guys so yeah Without further ado, thanks for watching, hope you guys liked the video, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one, bye!